Hi folks, what's the crack? I've been asked by a lot of you over the last year or so how I get the shots out of this fantastic little camera. This is my Insta 361X on board my motorbike. How I take the shots from this into the free software, which is the Insta 360 Studio, which you can download for PC and Mac. How you select the shots, how you manipulate them and then spit them out the other side so you can use in all your motor vlog and videos. Or indeed, it's compatible with any other hobby that you might be into. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, we'll jump straight in. So when you come back with your files from whatever you've been recording, in this case I've been out recording on my motorbike, which is, uh, I'm sure, what you've been watching on my YouTube channel for the last year or so. The Insta360 camera has just been an incredible addition for when you're a moto vlogger, but sure, I know there's millions of other purposes you can use it for as well. But in this case, just the motorbike. So when you look at your files, you'll see, well, first thing you, you'll see is that the files are numbered the same. There's two files of each. So there's two fours, two fives, two sixes. The reason for that is because the camera has two lenses, one on the front, one on the back. So don't worry about that. You haven't duplicated your file. You just need to press on one button, or one file rather, and it'll open both the fours. One can't work without the other because since it's a 360 camera, if you only accessed one lens, you'd have a, well, a 180 camera. <laughs> but, <laughs> Please bear with me here, the speed of my computer is so slow, it needs a, a new lump of coal put into the engine to keep a lit. Okay, so that's the first thing you'll see. Uh, uh, it's chugging along, trying to play there. I'm just going to pause it. There we go. Now, the first thing you, you'll see is that it comes up in view mode. This is True360, so your audience at home can sit and watch everything by moving their phone around or their tablet and basically uh, correspond with your movements. And you, you see people, you know, walking down the street, you can tell they're watching a 360 video when they're moving the phone around and spinning their head around with it and all. But I am not doing that. I don't particularly need that sort of uh, stuff. I am just selecting shots from the camera footage. So you use free capture, press free capture there. Now, obviously, I've set the camera recording before I've placed the Insta360 stick down inside the back of my jacket, sticking up to out the top of my jacket with the camera on it. So, obviously, you, you need to start recording before you put that in, into position. So, in this case, the clip is about nine minutes long. I'm just going to sort of roughly guess where I, you know, I'll come up to here or something and... I know I'll be on the road at that stage. Yes, there I am. Oop, I'm on the road, but I'm stopped. I won't know what I'm doing. Okay, I'll select somewhere else where I'm moving. I'm only doing this for the purpose of this exercise to show you how to select a shot from the Insta360 software. Okay, so I'm recording there now. So... Just pause it, and this is your in point here. So drag your in point all the way up to here, roughly. So when you export this clip, and you can export as many clips as you want from your raw footage, which again, in this case, is nine minutes long, but normally, on average, I would ex export something like seven or eight different clips from one long clip, if you know what I mean. And the beauty is, even if you're short on footage, you can go back and use the same footage, just select different angles from it, which I've done on many an, an occasion, especially when I get caught out with rain or if I'm only on one stretch of lovely country road, which I want to use time and time again, just use the same clip. Just select different angles. So, anyway, talking of selecting angles, here we go. With your mouse, you can spin the camera all the way around. You can zoom in and out. Not that far. So, okay, stop playing here, Dave. So, one angle I do like is this one. The sort of, by the way, I, I call these shots my top shots. And to me, it looks like there's a drone following you. So, I love this. So I'm just manipulating using the mouse on the screen here. 
I'm sure you can use your keyboard functions as well to do all this, but I just prefer using the mouse. I'm always, always looking for the easy way. So once you've selected your starting shot and your starting angle, you go down to here, and that's your first keyframe. Yeah, I double click that. Sorry about that. So that's your first keyframe there, okay? So the starting point is going to, or the starting shot of your clip is going to be that. So we'll play it on a little bit. And I'm going to show you a little trick now. So after you've got sort of five, six seconds of that, in this case, this instance, I might want to let the software do a little move to another shot. So what you need to do is when you want to start your move, you pause it, put in another keyframe. Actually, did you, did you see how the shot went a bit skew with there? That's because the lane that I was riding on actually goes around a corner. And when you go around a corner, it does weird and wonderful things to your camera angle. So you can keep it all straight, of course, just by inserting keyframes and keep straightening your shot as I have done there. So I'm just going to select another keyframe. I'll only press it the once this time. And there you go, you see it coming in there. I'm going to play it on a little bit because from this keyframe I've just inserted there, I'm going to start a little camera move. I don't know to which angle yet. I'm just I'm just uh, showing you this for the purpose of this tutorial video. Okay, so we'll keep it there. And what I'm going to do now is to select well, pause it first to select just by using the scroll again where I want the software to move the shot to from that little point there, that second keyframe. So I quite like it when we reveal a bit of the road where I'm going to. Now to do that you can zoom out a little bit. Now you see that curve coming in. Well Again, when you start playing with all of this stuff, you realize that if you have the selfie stick, indeed, I think you can get longer selfie sticks as well. So the higher you have the selfie stick, the more you minimize the curve. So this is because the selfie stick is literally only one or two foot above my head, that it's curving everything to try and get me in it. So you see, if I zoomed in there, the shot is pretty much straight on the horizon, but then you don't get me in it. Maybe you want to do something like that, you can, but I'm only doing this again for the purposes of this tutorial video, so I'm going to come out, oh gosh, I'm not going to come out of that. Um, so I'm going to come out, let's select that shot, so at least we've got my head in and we've got the road in front, and you choose that as your final keyframe in this tutorial video, anyway it will be, so just press that once, and that'll come up there, my lovely slow computer, now that's the only clip that I'm selecting here, and I'm now going to export that, so I drag that, which is the end frame, oh yeah, end marker, drag that up to about there, that's got to, don't drag it before your third keyframe, because then you'll miss the move, so dra drag it slightly after the keyframe, and that's it, go up to this and export it, and then I'll show you it playing back in real time what uh, once we've exported it. Now you can export it in 4K if you want. I use everything in HD, 1920 by 1080 because I'm only doing this for my YouTube videos. If I was doing it for broadcast, I'd probably export it in 4K. This is really important here. The quality of the camera isn't great, so select the maximum amount of bit rates that you can use. My frame rate is 25, because that's what I recorded the footage in, because I'm in Europe, so I shoot everything 25 frames progressive on all my cameras. And obviously just select where you want your file to go. In this case, it's going to the desktop of my computer. And that's it. Press OK there. My lovely, slow, coal-powered MacTop Pro takes a little bit of time to export. But here we are. This is the clip we selected from the first keyframe. Travelling along the country road here.
Again, this is the Insta 361X on a 120cm Insta selfie stick sticking out the back of my motorcycle jacket. I have other videos actually on my channel which shows you different mountain positions, so you might want to check them out. I'll try and link one at the end of this video. And I, I think it was around about here now where, yes, where we put the second keyframe. You see how the software is starting to turn the shot around? That's exactly what we wanted. Into the final keyframe, which we selected, which was this. Of course, you can let it play on and on. I'm just going to play this shot over again, just the once more, whilst I thank you so much for tuning in. I hope uh, this was a really easy tutorial for you to understand because I know from speaking to many of you on this channel, it's one of those things which would scare a lot of people to try and even get into the software. But it's so simple um, because once you're shown stuff like this once, then just like this, hopefully you'll go out, download the software and indeed buy one of those Insta360 cameras through the link in the blurb below, which all helps me bring you future videos. Once again, folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm Dave Perry for Wheelie Good TV.